It's really not looking good for CSGO right now, guys. Today's video is gonna cover a lot of stuff, including the article linked down below in English. If you guys have not seen it, please do me a favor, read it down below. It's in English for all of you guys. It's about the Dutch government, and that being the Netherlands, and that being the three countries, Germany, the UK, as well as Belgium, trying to ban loot cases, loot crates, uh, loot boxes, whatever you wanna call them, inside all these games. And honestly, after reading it, it does not look good for CSGO. Now, in the article, in the research document down below, it actually talks about 10 games that have been popularized on Steam. You guys can imagine are the 10 most popular games on Steam. It's kind Counter-Strike Global Offensive is certainly one of them, and it's not looking good for the future. The article also goes on to actually rate 10 of these games, both on a PEGI scale, that's actually pretty much a player restriction or an age level restriction for all the games, and on top of that goes into great detail about what should be banned in those Netherlands countries or Dutch countries, like I said before guys, and very importantly as well when I touched on those three countries, the UK, Belgium, and Germany. That means if they were to ban CSGO cases, loot crates, loot boxes, this goes for all games out there that actually have these in their game, if they were to ban CSGO cases, specifically for all of you guys who are watching for CSGO news, that's up to 10% of the player base as actually reported by HLTV back in around 2016. So these go these numbers could be of course adjusted either way, but if they do ban CSGO cases, that would be for those three countries around 10% of the player base who could no longer open CSGO cases. And in that sense, would they even want CSGO skins? We're not really sure how that would actually affect things. But let's get into details though about what makes these loot, loot cases, crates, cases, what makes them illegal by the government standards. And again, these are actually all by the Dutch government standards, why they actually want to make four of these games apparently researched for the 10 games to actually contravene the law, and that in their word of mouth, guys, I'll show you on screen as well, contravene meaning contradicting or going against the law, which in other words means pretty basically they're illegal. So of 10 of the games they actually researched, they found four of them to be illegal by, by several standards here, and you guys are going to recognize these words directly go with CSGO being very illegal in the, in the, in the, in the eyes of the Dutch government. So first of all, if the in-game goods are actually from the loot box are transferable, of course, you guys know CSGO skins. If you open a CSGO case, you can ultimately, after I think it's a seven day trade ban now, of course we have the, the seven day trade ban when you get traded skins, but after you open a, a skin out of a case, you have to wait, I think it's seven days as well before you can trade that, but they are transferable. You can sell them in OP skins, you can sell them on the market, you can go give them to other players. That directly correlates, they are transferable. Also next up, uh, if the consumer cannot influence the outcome of the case or crate, Hmm, when you open a CSGO case, can you influence? Can you actually manipulate what you get? Can you do anything besides just click a button and have it open it for you? The answer is no. So yes, it also goes in line with that rule. It breaks that rule, guys. You, as the consumer, there is no, this pretty much says there is no skill involved. All you do is click a button, you open the case. If there's no skill involved, it's definitely a form of gambling. Also, if the in-game goods can be traded, and like we touched on before, and I'm sure you guys are very well aware, even though there is now a seven-day trade ban also killing CSGO, these items are certainly tradable, and all three of these and other points made in the article down below as well, they all are contradicted by CSGO itself, which means in the eyes of the Dutch government, what they want to do is of course make CSGO cases illegal, make them not worth, not able to be opened inside those countries, uh, I guess uh, restrictive, restrictive areas because they are breaking the law. And one more rule they did actually break in, in terms of CSGO breaking the rules they want, they need to abide by for this keep on operating. Also one of them was if the prizes they actually pay for to open have a monetary value. So there's games out there like Fortnite and League of Legends. They, if you open a case or a crate or a capsule in those games, Fortnite, League of Legends that being, those skins technically don't have value in game. Now again, you can find ways to sell League of Legends skins on like eBay and stuff, but it's very hard to do. And Fortnite, you cannot sell what you actually open up in those cases. So that would actually abide by these rules. But CSGO, as many of you guys know, when you open a case, it has monetary that skin has monetary value, which is transferable, it's tradable, and in the eyes of the law, in the Dutch law that is, they want to make that illegal. They want to make that so miners are not trying to open cases and trying to sell these skins or having more of an addiction. And of course, the main focus overall, the article itself as well, is the use of miners using this game and of course the potential for them to be addicted towards the gambling aspect. And is if overall, the main article, the point of the article is to actually find out, is opening CSGO cases, is that a form of gambling? Now it's been a constant debate over the past few years, and especially over the past year itself, especially ever since the attack on gambling. Many gambling YouTubers saying as well, well your odds of gambling, you know, opening CSGO cases on other gambling sites out there are much better than opening CSGO cases. And yes, CSGO cases are still a form of gambling. That is, I, I totally agree with that. Leave a comment down below, what do you guys think? And so by Dutch law, they want to make this actually illegal to do so, illegal to actually open cases. And I guess maybe one fun fact, actually you could read in the article as well, is, is that 70-95% of minors, so up to 95% of minors out there have played video games or do play video games, so 
yay for all of you guys. I mean, we're taking over the world with video games, but it's in a bad form. Of course, we had, uh, I think it was actually Star Wars, they had their game come out where they actually initially had those loot crates. They took those out eventually as well because they were so rigged and so unbelievably abused in the game because you could actually buy a case to actually get an advantage in the game. And of course, that's just unethical in itself. And again, all these games out there now seem to have more in-game purchases than ever because that's the, that's where the money is. And so the real question is, I know we're, we're taking over the world, guys. It's a great thing to see kids out there playing video games, at least in my eyes. But besides that, it just it seems like we're going about it all the wrong way. And all these companies out there seem to be all money hungry. I'm not really sure where I stand on this, but I do want to say as well, if this does go through, if the Dutch government, if the Netherlands can no longer open CSGO cases, like I said previously, that's 10% of the CSGO player base who can no longer open skins. How does that then affect the market as it's already been affected by the seven day trade ban? Now, very lastly, I do want to say as well, the article did conclude by giving a PG, PEGI rating. It's pretty much a player age restriction level for all these games they did actually cover. They did cover 10 games. Of those 10 games, they gave two of them a PEGI rating rating of 18, which means they think in their eyes you should be 18 years or older to play those two games. It does not specify which games actually got that PEGI rating of 18 plus. The other ratings out there I think were 12, 7, and 3, so that means you only have to be 3 years old or 7 years old, which is not bad. So of the 10 games, two of them, they actually want to suggest a player age of 18 years or older, and that could be CSGO, especially given the graph on screen for all of you guys when they go into the in, in the intermittent details of the gambling itself, as you guys can very clearly see, I Item number one, loot item number one could very well be CSGO. As you guys read out the details of that, it sounds exactly like CSGO in terms of what they say about it. And this goes in correlation. We actually had Belgian, the Belgian government talk about this later on, or early on this, this year, I covered this as well. They wanted to get rid of loot crates yeah, as well. They wanted to continue to push this. It seems that movement is now taking a rise over there in the Netherlands, and this could affect CSGO's future very, very heavily. So leave a comment down below. What do you guys think about that? Could CSGO cases be banned in some countries? It does seem very potentially possible. And how they react. Apparently, as of right now, the timeline for Valve to respond is actually eight weeks to take their cases out of the out of the actual game. If they were one of the uh, one of the games that were actually in the research study, which is very highly likely, they took ten most popular games on Steam, and I think Counter Strike's number three or four or five, at least the top five games. So it should have been one of the games in this actual research study, and it could affect the CS:GO future very heavily. Now, on top of that, guys, our very last story for today. I'm going to save some stories for the the weekend recap for all of you. We did have actually a very emotional story, and that was former Cloud Nine. I never thought I would. Say that well, I guess I did eventually, but not this 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 soon. Former Cloud9 member Shroud has officially stepped down from the Cloud9 organization as a streamer. He'll continue to stream full time. He also mentioned over the past four months, guys, he has over 1.3 billion minutes of watch time, which is just unfathomable. But on top of that, I say former Cloud9, he steps down from the organization. He also has officially retired from CS:GO. So I, I just did, I never I think a lot of people out there thought he might try and make a return maybe sometime in the future. But he's just been so successful streaming. So congrats to him. That's really awesome to see that he is now full-time into streaming, full-time invested and no longer tied down by organization. He also mentioned his email down below. So all the sponsors he want, guys, you can imagine the sponsorships he's going to get on that channel as well. And I'll link his Twitch down below for all of you guys who are not aware of that. On top of that as well, we do have a troll out there. At least we think it's a troll, especially given the current DreamHack Marseille tournament going on. Cloud9 doing decently well and Cloud9 recently being appointed the number one world spot. I don't really know where that came from HLTV. But on top of that, we did have automatic reply to that tweet and say, he once said if Shroud retired, he would stay tuned people. Now I can imagine it's probably a troll out there, especially given cloud nine success. But you know, given the fact automatic lost his Asian duo partner, Stewie2K to SK gaming, you never know what's going to happen. So hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of CSK news. If you guys did leave a comment or a like down below, I will see you all tomorrow sometime soon. As always, my name is Jake Marr like you and uh,